From its early days here in Holloway Hall, the teaching laboratory known as the Campus Elementary School was a training center for future educators. In 1956, the elementary school moved into Carruthers Hall, and for kids like Buzz Christensen, routine, repetition, and rote memory filled their days. Well, there were, again, there were six classrooms. Um, probably the best part of the school was that uh, it was a learning ground for the teachers that were going to then Salisbury State Teachers College. Nice chance to be uh, student taught by the students at the, at the <coughs> what was then the State Teachers College. Students at the campus school originally were children of the faculty members, and later enrollment became open to the public. The elementary school itself featured grades kindergarten through seventh grade. One former student, Deborah Clark, who still resides in Salisbury, recalls vividly her memories of the school. I attended from uh, 1959 until 1962, so three years, kindergarten, first and second grade. We had all kinds of different uh, areas in the kindergarten room, which was really quite large. It was probably, um, I'd say, at least one and a half to two times larger than a regular classroom. Uh, we uh, had a a playhouse, a big wooden playhouse that we could play in and all kinds of other areas that we could play. And we had our um, uh, nap area. We always had our little, um, little blankets that we would lay down on every day. The elementary school students often participated in many of the activities that the normal school sponsored and college kids participated in. In the, the college itself, there was a May Day Queen picked and her May Day Court, just like you have in Homecoming. And uh, on May 1st, we would have the May Day celebration out in front of Holloway Hall. And uh, we would always be able to go over and watch. And some students would participate different ways. Um, I didn't, I just got to watch. But we had uh, the regular May Day pole where the girls would, would twirl the, and weave the string or the, uh, the big sash around the poles. And we had all kinds of things at the thing. We had food and everything else and games. It was fun. One of the main reasons for the school's location in Salisbury was the Eastern Shore's lack of educational institutions and lack of highly trained teachers. At the time when I was attending here, I lived in Fruitland, and, uh, which was even more rural than here. There was probably three streets, literally, in, in Fruitland. Uh, Salisbury was it, it was, a, it was a drive to come up to Salisbury, but everything was here. Uh, all the shopping and everything was in this area. Route 13 was two lanes, not four lanes like it is now. Uh, when I was really small, Route 50 didn't even go through town. There were a lot of farms during the time I was growing up. It was a rural, but it was, you know, it also had businesses coming in. I mean, we had DuPont dresser over here where the Red Door sub shop was. That was just all woods when I was growing up. And there was no, for a while, there was no Riverside Drive when I was growing up. That was just all countryside. And there was a artesian well where there's a fenced in like area on Riverside Drive. That used to be an artesian well. And we the elementary school's ever present principal, Pauline Rial, reigned the school with a passion and compassion for her students. I sat at the very back of the room, and this one day she came in and she sat next to me. There was nobody sitting there. And we were taking a test, and the test, or a quiz, and the quiz was written up on the board. Well, I had very poor eyesight, and nobody realized how bad it was at that point. So I couldn't see the test, and she, um, she asked me why I wasn't doing the test. Well, of course, you know, being Miss Ryle sitting next to me and not being able to look, I started crying and crying, and I said I couldn't see. So she immediately went up and told the teacher, and the teacher uh, sat me closer to the room. And then at the end of the day, she met my mother outside and told her that I needed to go get an eye exam. Well, you know, all of the elite, uh, you know, students uh, that came out of that uh, elementary school, I mean, there were, you know, minds full of much which were turned into you know just phenomenal individuals so um, I mean there's evidence of that. From training talented teachers to educating a generation of bright students the tradition of providing an excellent innovative education to the Eastern Shore and beyond remains the guiding principle of what is now Salisbury University.